they walk in that room, they become yours. And you got this, this energy inside your soul that says, I am the number one determinant of the success or failure of my students. Hey y'all, when you get back, kick some butt. I'll see you in the winner's circle, celebrating your victory. Let's go, 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 let's go. Let's do this, let's do this, let's go, let's go. Thank you, everybody. And we are live. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to week 177 of the AP and Principles, New Principles Academy. Let me see who we got here this morning. We got Mona. I know I mess your name up every every week. Mona Abamolak. And then again, maybe I got it right. We got Takesha High in the building. And Mona said good morning to both myself and the queen. Takesha High is in the building. Dr. Rachel Edo Eckett. Hey, Doc, let me say something to you real quick, Dr. Rachel Edo Eckett. I was uh I was in um New Bedford, Massachusetts yesterday and got a chance to have lunch with the principal um, at a nice seafood restaurant. And we were just kind of talking about the academy. And he said, man, that one you had with the with the woman in the pink dress. <laughs> he said, I said, you mean Dr. Rachel Edelway? He said, that's it. He said that one with that. He said that message was special. He said, I got a lot out of that one. You know, that was it. Uh, my man, Principal Warley Williams. And we're going to talk about him in a few minutes, but I just wanted to put that out there that uh, people are listening. They're listening to you, Doc. They're listening to all the other guests. And, um, you know, what a beautiful thing we got. Let's keep it going. Takesha Truesdale is in the building. Grace Castaneda, Marsha Poe, Rodney Richardson, Ronald Pugh, Vanessa Zeskin, MPA Jaguars. That's my man, Principal Josh Tovar in the building Dr. Sheikha Houston, man, she was teaching this morning, man. I mean, she teach every morning, right? Every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, create, ed create and educate. But it was something, I don't know, man, something grabbed me this morning. I had to write on there. I said, teach, Sheikha. She was teaching, man. She's teaching hard, too. Uh, her and Tammy. Uh, Otis Kitchen is in the building. Scott Wiley, Principal Otis Kitchen is second. <laughs> Let's do that right. Is in the building. Scott Wiley's in the building. Uh, oh, oh, and here's Tammy, Dr. Tammy Taylor. And I, and I had said the same thing, Tammy, because I, I don't know what it was today. Maybe it was the content was just something that resonated with me. I watch every Saturday. Y'all be teaching, man. But something something made me just say, teach, teach, Tammy, teach, Sheikha. You know, it may, you know, because different, you know, different content moves different people different ways. And it was just moving me that way. And I just had to tell y'all, man, keep teaching, man, keep teaching, create and educate every Saturday morning. 10 30. Uh, you don't want to miss that. And I know they got other things they do during the week. I'm always in the sky during the week and I miss that kind of stuff, but you know, check them out. And then we got uh, Josh Tovar every Sunday night at seven o'clock Eastern. Uh, uh, yeah, him and um, Principal Dean Packard every Sunday night, seven o'clock Eastern time, Facebook Live. Unlock the middle is what it's called. Unlock the middle. We got Nequinta Mays Gates in the building. Uh, Radhika Dinesh is in the building. Sharice Ayers. Hey, Sharice. Sharice, good to see you, as always. If you didn't see, those of you that didn't see the interview that we did with Sharice Ayers, scroll back. It's one of the ones we had a series going, which I'm going to resume, by the way, called um, Leading While Black. So just look for one of those going back about a year now. Uh, Arcella Austri's in the building. The Queen is in the building. Kimberly Broughton Cafele, man, it's so good to be home with my wife, man. I, we 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 gonna, gonna do a session myself create and educate Sean uh, Sean Hurt Josh Tovar Dean Packer we we all that so that's Tammy and Sheikha last Sunday in December we are gonna do a series on just the, the the role of the spouse or the significant other in our in our lives as leaders 
And I was saying to my wife last night, she probably like, why are you telling the world this stuff? I mean, I just told her, I, I, I just couldn't wait to get home just to be in the presence of my wife, man, in the company of my wife. I, I, I was kind of down while I was out. When I left, once I got to where I was, I was good. But then it's, it's, it's something about just being with the spouse, man, and, and, I, and I just get that, that energy. You know, I get back to where I need to be. So that's important. You know, I'm not leading the school, but my work, I think it matters. So I still need to have that sort support around me as I move forward. Uh, we got Rashad Davis out there in the 702 in the building. Marjorie Pitt. Stacy L. Joy, man, she's a big supporter. I got to tell y'all, man, she, she makes these very beautiful posts of every week that we do this. So I appreciate the work you do just in terms of your role, Stacy L. Joy, in making making the platform out make, making making it available and accessible to people who are out there appreciate you renee graham in the building right here in montclair new jersey michael benton that's my man out there in cincinnati jacqueline williams is in the building good to see you jacqueline we got our jack we got and we got jacqueline harriet up there in nova scotia and as i said jacqueline last week you know um with hurricane lee heading your way now it's I guess it's here. Um, I haven't watched the news today, but I think it's scheduled to be up your way. So, you you know, you all hunker down. It's, it, luckily, it's only a cat one as opposed to a five. But, you know, anybody in the family that's impacted by adverse weather or anything that's going on in the world, you know, certainly we pray for you. You're in our thoughts. You're in our prayers because we are all family. So with those of you that don't know Jacqueline Harriet, she's on the Facebook side. She's up there in, in Nova Scotia, Canada. And that's where the hurricane is either um, headed toward today or, or it's there, but it's a cat one. And hopefully it won't be too much of an issue um, while it's there. Uh, Jasmine Harris is in the building. Grace Castaneda, I said that one. Trinity Price, Sean Hurt, man, he was teaching this morning, man. He was teaching. He used his graph this morning. Just go back and see it. You know, he was talking about who's who, who's more important the teacher or the principal but then he broke it down and 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 what he was essentially saying was everybody everybody has a role to play you know but go back and watch that one along with create and educate later on don't don't do it right now while i'm on right rod laws is in the building i'm getting ready to stop y'all melissa jones chunu is in the building she's gonna be my guest later on in the um in the year uh justin mcmillan i see you good to see you good to see you um from colorado ready to kick the tires and light the fires man and let me tell you something justin i, I can't wait for 10 o'clock eastern time man it's it's, it's eight o'clock your time but i but i can't wait for 10 o'clock man i ain't i ain't i haven't been as excited about a college football game probably in my entire life as i am today with this game against colorado state and you know the dynamics of that game behind the scenes so you know i'm i'm, I'm ready for that game man i I, I got the snacks already, man. I might even have to bring me a brew for that one, right? Karima Anque, I see you. I see you. Good to see you this morning. I think I'm gonna end it with uh Kar with, with Karima. And let me let me get it started, y'all, because I got a lot to talk about. I see you, Lou Saunders. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you, you Golf Far. Let me let me go. Oh, I see you, Doc McKeever. I gotta I gotta end it there because Doc McKeever Jeter still recovering from 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 the back surgery, and she's now walking without the walker. So she's coming along very quickly. So good to see you. And with that said, I'm going to stop it. I, oh, man, I see Marcus Jackson in the building and I see Vincent Stalin. So, you know, I got to shout them out. That's that's you know, that's that's my dudes, man. So Marcus, J Dr. Marcus Jackson, Dr. Vincent Stallings. I can't be saying y'all names without them doctors because y'all worked too hard and spent too much money by me not saying doctor. So I got you. Hey, y'all, let me say to you formally now. Good morning, greetings, welcome to week 177, can you believe that, 177 of the AP and New Principles Academy, and as I ask you every week, I'll ask you right now, how you feeling, right, it's a relevant question, I ask it every week, how you feeling? I'm going to say it again, as I said, if I said a few minutes ago, I, I, when I left to go to I, I was out in two two locations this week. Um, I'll, I'll get into it in a minute. But as I was going to the second one and, you know, no, normally I'm not traveling on a Thursday. I'm already out on a Thursday. So this was leaving to go to Newark on a Thursday. And I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know, you know, because I got you know, I was home a day with the wife. 
feeling good. So I walked through that airport, like kind of moping. You know, somebody hadn't seen me that knew me, they probably would have questioned that. Like, yo, what's up? You know, and just, just wanted to be home with the missus, man. You know, so different circumstances. Y'all out here leading schools. Some of y'all in there teaching in classrooms. Some of you are not even in, ed in, in education. You're just doing your thing, but you see, see it, as they were saying in church, not robbery to tune in on Saturday morning. So whatever it is, right? There are things, there are situations, there are circumstances, there are events, et cetera, that may bring us down a little bit. But as I keep saying every week, that's life. That's just life. But the question, the key question is, what are you doing to lift yourself back up? That's the question. You can't stay down there. What are you doing to lift yourself back up? That's the question. When I got to that school, let me tell you, yesterday, uh, Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School, led by my man, Principal Warley Williams. When I got back, when I got to that school, and I'm going to be honest, I hope he's on here because he's, he's, he's not one that reveals himself on social media. He's a longtime uh, fan member of the platform, but he's not one that shows up in the thread. But when I pulled up, man, in the car, and that man was standing there smiling at me, man. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, man to man here. When the brother was standing there smiling at me, gave me the strong, like, kung fu grip handshake. And told me, man, I'm glad to see you. That took me right back where I needed to be, man. Young brother, 39. Right? His picture, he and I on my Facebook page. Check it out. Right? And 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 so 39 doing his thing, 2,200 students, over 300 staff members. When I was in the room in the auditorium with him, I felt like I was talking to a district. It was just the staff of his school. But but my point here is, is, is the brother, just his smile and his presence, his handshake, his greeting, it took me where I needed to be to give that message yesterday, those two messages, a keynote and a breakout session with his staff. So what a, what a great day, right? So I'm saying to you, whatever you got to do, Get yourself back up so you could bring that energy, so you could bring that flavor, so you could bring that power, so you could bring that fire. Because if I could speak for me, I don't need anything to bring me up on Saturday morning. Just knowing that I'm going to be speaking to all of you on Saturday morning, I wake up on fire. Woo! Woo! I wake up that way, man. Because I know this is getting ready to happen. Hey, somebody, hit that share button, man. Hit that retweet button. Hit that repost button. Hit them whatever buttons. Tag somebody. Let them Facebook groups know. Whatever you got to do, let them know we here. We here for week 177. So so let me go through my announcements real quick. I'm going solo today, man. I'm, I'm flying solo. Right. Got my Montreal Panthers jersey on Negro Leagues up in Canada, y'all. Montreal Panthers. I'm flying solo. And I got to tell you something while I'm flying solo. I got to go Luther on you real quick. No, I'm not going to sing to you, but I got to go Luther. Now, like I tell all my audiences, if I got to tell you which Luther I'm talking about, you don't know Luther. I'm going Luther on you. This is what I mean. When I took my my my, my new girlfriend back in 84, I guess it was. My wife now, when I took her to see Luther, when I was still trying to figure out life, Luther said something, man. I've shared this with you before. Luther said to the audience, the screaming audience, he said, I'm going to take my time singing these love songs. Man, my topic today, I need, I, I'm going to go way over time. I'm just going to take my time singing these love songs. Those that got to leave, I understand. But I'm not leaving. I'm staying here. If this topic of instructional leadership takes me two hours solo, I'm just going to do it because I'm taking my time singing these love songs. One of the things that I know is that this platform gets far more views in video format than it does in the live format. So therefore, I'm not worried about it. 
right? But I, but I encourage all of you to stay with the live because that's where the most power is, right? But I'm going to take my time singing these love songs about instructional leadership. And this is only part one. I'm doing part two on October 21st while I'm in Montego Bay, Jamaica with my with a guest, Nicole Turner, the instructional coach guru. As far as I'm concerned, she's the instructional coach guru. And I'm bringing her on with me to chop it up October 21 live from Montego Bay, Jamaica. She'll be part two. And then part three will be December 2nd where I go solo again on instructional leadership. So I first did this weeks five through 11. That was six weeks that I did on instructional leadership, but I pulled a little from there, but I got a whole lot of content that I hadn't shared with you then that I'm gonna share today. And then those those um, pre, those those subsequent two weeks. So, I'm, but I'm gonna take my time singing these love songs. I ain't gonna rush. When I'm done, I'm not gonna be. I mean, when I get like when I still got a bunch more questions, I'm not gonna say to y'all, "Look, I'm gonna be back next time." To fit. Nah, nah, I'm getting all this in, man, because it's somebody out there that needs this. In fact, before I just do my quick announcements, let me say this to you: School is in full session now. All states, all over the country, in different parts of the world. Everybody went in. I'm going to assume you were fired up. You were ready. You were ready to do things you hadn't done before. You were ready to take your game to the next level. And now here you are. You've been in it, some of you, a month or so, others a week or so, right? And it, everything in between. And there could be folks out there now like, man, that fire that I had that first day, that first week, I'm back to like, it ain't the same now. Because the challenges, the obstacles, the issues, the concerns, the crises, right, et cetera, man, they setting in now. And we still got a, a long haul ahead of us. Well, that's what the purpose of this session is, is to say, hold up. <laughs> you, can't, you can't feel that right now. And at the end of the day, the end of the proverbial day, the children are in the building to learn they're there to learn so the question is and, and i'm using it as a topic what is my value to the teachers that i supervise instructionally i'm gonna give it to you again and i'm really i'm not there yet i didn't do my announcements <laughs> what is my value to the, to the teachers that I supervise instructionally. See, so think about what your year has been thus far. Hold up your mirror to yourself and ask yourself, what has been my value to the teachers thus far? Are they growing because of my leadership? Not despite your leadership, but are they growing because of your leadership? Oh, man, I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. But let me let me get these announcements in, man. My other I, I got to shout out the greater. Uh, no, the, the, the Elysian Fields ISD Elysian Fields ISD. That's E-L-S. I mean, E-L-Y-S-I-A-N ISD leadership. That ISD in Texas, that all school districts are called ISD independent school district. Um, so when you hear ISD, you, you're talking about Texas. So in East Texas, man, I spent the whole day with just the leadership team under the leadership of uh, of, 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 of uh, uh, Monica Simmons. And we had a great day, man. Monica Simmons, man, great superintendent. Um, she happens to be a black woman. And she came up through the ranks. She started in that district. She's, she's from that town. She started in that district as a first grade teacher and worked her way up to superintendent of schools, man. It's incredible. Same district you started in as a first grade teacher and now you're the superintendent of schools. You know, so she did a lot, you know, lot, you know, a lot of levels and she she fulfilled all those different roles. And now here she is doing that work. So shout out to my, uh, Monica Simmons and shout out to, again, my man, Warley Williams out there in New Bedford massachusetts so um to the first timers 
welcome to us. Don't th let this be your last. Go to the YouTube channel, uh, AP and New Principles Academy, and binge watch all 176 sessions that you miss, man. I promise you there's not one that you'll find is not relevant to your practice if you're a leader, right? And a shout out to Dr. Lauren Wells. I see you. I see you. Um, she was, uh, we, 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 we did a session two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, something like that, Laura. And, uh, that thing, man, went viral, man. It's just, it's like 4,900, 4,900 views on YouTube right now. So if you didn't see it, check it out. Um, ASCD real quick, y'all. I'm the keynote speaker, ASCD leadership summit, man. The opening session. That's not my first one either. <laughs> I've done, I've done three or four. But uh, here we are again, 2023. I'm the opening keynote speaker. I want you to come down. I want, I want to see you, man. I want to shake your hand. I want to take a take a selfie with you or ussy with you, right? So come on to uh, Grapevine, Texas. It's, all, it's October 12th through 15th. I'm the opening keynote on the 13th. I'm bringing thunder. I'm bringing lightning. I'm bringing fire. I'm bringing inspiration. I'm bringing encouragement. I'm bringing empowerment. But most importantly, I'm bringing information. So come on down there with me um, at the... Um, at the ASCD Leadership Summit, October 12th through 15th, but my keynote is on the 13th. Uh, Josh Tovar said, make sure you watch episode 70. There's two parts of, of the AP and New Leaders, uh, New Principles Academy. That's what I interviewed Josh, so make sure you check that out. And then, I, I, you know, my, I'm only going to show you one book because I'm taking a lot of time. The Assistant Principal Identity, that's the new one. If you don't have it yet, go to Amazon, get yourself a copy. Right. All the other books I'll show you all later or next week. Um, Let's go. I think I'm done. Yeah, let's go. All right, y'all. Listen. Um, My topic again, what is my value to the teachers that I supervise instructionally? I got a lot to say. I got 10 questions. That's it. 10 questions. But. I got all these sub questions, so there, there's there's a lot here. I decided I'm gonna put the ten questions on the screen for you all. I can't put all the sub questions because it would just be too much for me to maneuver. But I, I but I at least want to put these questions on the screen for you to check out and uh and and put them in your notes. I'm gonna make a strong suggestion today that you do in fact take notes. Right, take some notes, y'all. Um, cause I'm giving you a lot, man. I'm giving you a lot. I spent all week putting this together. So take some notes and, 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 and then go back and watch the video later, watch it a few times. We're going to give you something. So let's jump into it. I told you before that I did instructional leadership when I first started the platform weeks five through 11. And, and I want you to go back and check those out as well. There's a lot there. Right. There's a lot there. So go back and check those out. Weeks five through 11. You see me with the beard and all that. That was right during the when we were at the stay at home. So, you know, nobody was shaving. So check check those out. Um, but, you know, I want to start it this way. I've said this to you on this platform before, and I think I said it recently. You know, instructional leadership, I put it I think about it in this context. You can go to the conference the institute, the academy, the seminar, the lecture, the presentation. You can listen to the podcast, the live stream. You can read a book. You can watch videos. You can read journals. You can read blog posts, a blog post. You can be you can be members of various different professional learning networks, PLNs, meaning social media. You know, all that you, you can do all those things, which they're all good. I got no criticism whatsoever. I see you, I see you, Dr. Princess Tao. But but here's the thing that they all have in common. Not one of those things that I just listed about maybe 15 different items, not one of them can provide you with feedback on your instruction, meaning the teacher, right? So let me word that differently because I came across as if I was talking to a teacher audience. Not one of those can give your teacher feedback on their instruction or any aspect of what happens in the classroom. All of those are just intaking of information. So you go to the conference and you receive information. You go to the institute, you go to the academy, you receive, you take in, you ingest information, right? You read the book, you're, you're taking in information. You read the blog posts, 
You watch the video. You watch this live stream. You listen to the podcast. You 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 engage on on social media, PLNs, professional learning networks. You read the journal. You join the organization and become a member, right? All of that stuff. But not one of those can say, hey, here's what I saw in your lesson. They can't do that. All you can do is read it and hopefully transfer it to your practice. But until you get the feedback, you really don't know the effectiveness of it outside of your own intuition of how you felt it was. So what I'm saying to you here, you got a school full of teachers. Man, I'm in that auditorium yesterday doing that keynote in New Bedford, uh, Massachusetts. And then I hope I didn't say Connecticut before because I felt like I was getting ready to say it just now. Massachusetts. So and then the cafeteria doing the breakout. And I'm looking at all these teachers. And I said to myself, I said, if they all read the books, went to the conference, all that kind of stuff. OK, fine. But somebody's got to be there to say, yeah, that worked. Or someone's got to be there to say, let's look at that. Because I, 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 I saw something. I saw where you could have handled that differently. I saw where you could have delivered that differently. I saw where there was X number of youngsters. They, they gave the impression that they got it, that they, that they comprehended. But as I really looked at them and, and then watched them work on the activity, it was clear that they had not gotten it. But you didn't have the opportunity to go to them to have the conversation. See, so that feedback, man, is critical. So if so, now let's go back to my initial remarks this morning when I talked about the difference between your excitement for starting school off for this new, new school year and where you might be right now. Now, I know that there are many folks on here now and beyond who's on here, folks who will see the video later, who are still at that high level of excitement, if not higher than they were the first day. But I also know that there are folks who went in there fired up, but then life happened and now they're not quite like they were here. Now they're not quite there. They somewhere here or lower. Right. So I'm saying to you. Two things, I guess. That number one, you got to bring yourself back there. But what if your teachers are going through the same thing? Well, what is it about your leadership that's keeping them inspired? What is it about your instructional leadership that brings value or adds value to the work that they're doing? What is it about the relationship? Now, this is key. What is it about the relationship that the teacher welcomes your input? What is it about the relationship that the teacher welcomes your visit into the classroom as frequently as you feel needs be, need, need be? So, in other words, one could be excited about being instructional leader, but the relationship is not there where teacher wants to receive you in that classroom. Teacher want, is open to hearing what you have to say. If that relationship is not there, so the relationship is critical. The relationship precedes the instructional leadership, instructional coaching. Because if, if, if I don't trust you, if I don't have faith in you, if I don't believe in you, if I don't respect you, if I don't appreciate you, then it's hard for me to hear you. It's hard for me to receive from you because we don't have a relationship. There's no trust there. There's no bond there. It's just you doing what you feel you have to do as a principal in this or an assistant principal, in this case, as an instructional leader and me feeling I have to do what I have to do as an employee in this district and hear you out. Well, that's not going to work. See, it's going to work when it's organic. It's going to work when the relationship is there. So therefore, as leader. I may not love everybody on that staff. If, if I can keep it real this morning, I may not necessarily like everybody on that staff, 
But if you're married to the building, then I'm stuck with you. So therefore, there's some there's certain sacrifices I'm going to have to make. And in this regard, that sacrifice is I'm going to have to bite the bullet and find a way to forge a relationship with you where there's trust between us. Because ultimately, guess what, y'all? Your babies, my babies, are sitting in that classroom with that teacher. Let's say hypothetically now that you don't like. I mean, let that resonate for a second. That, that, that classroom, those babies are sitting in that classroom with that teacher that you don't like. So therefore, because you don't like this teacher, there's no rapport with this teacher. There's no relationship with this teacher. Well, well, you know something? It's them babies who lose. They lose. So you're going to have to bite the bullet. See, you, you, you can't overpower success in a school. You can't, you can't force relationship. You can't force success. You cannot force force achievement. You cannot force academic growth and development. You, you can't punish with a with an ink pen, a red pen, or a memorandum that's tightened. You can't punish success out of somebody. Someone might watch some movie and think they can, but in reality, you cannot. You can't punish greatness out of somebody. You can't punish phenomenal out of somebody. You can't punish extraordinary and amazing out of somebody you gotta you gotta have that relationship i can hear anybody if i respect them i mean like, like i i saw sean's name on here sean hurt and i saw sheikah and tim i watched them faithfully man and then josh on sunday i watched them faithfully every saturday i gotta prepare for my own session I watched them faithfully. Let me tell you why. Because I respect them. Because I appreciate them. Because I like them a great deal. Right? And I have a relationship with them. So therefore, it is never robbery to tune in to these colleagues every Saturday morning. I could be watching ESPN to get ready for college football. I could be doing a million things, but I trust, I appreciate, I respect, I like dearly my colleagues that I watch in the morning and on Sunday night. Well, that's what's got to be in the school as instructional leader, y'all. When it's tension in the building, y'all don't like one another, y'all don't know one another, Y'all don't speak to one another. You just in the building, human beings taking up space, but ain't nothing going on in there. Guess what? The babies lose, man. The babies lose. You know something, y'all? I regret, man. I ain't even on number one yet. Jeez. And it's, it's 1130. I knew I was going to do that to myself, man. Don't worry about it. Just rock with me, man. Rock with me. Coach Prime, Deion Sanders don't come on till 10 o'clock tonight. Ain't nothing else to do today, right? <laughs> Stay here with me, right? So 10 o'clock Eastern time. So we got all the time zones in here. So so, so, so I use that as a preliminary. Let me, let me, let me, let's jump into it. So again, the topic. What is my value to the teachers that I supervise instructionally? But when I, when I was preparing my notes, I said, let me, let me tweak that question. Does my leadership benefit my school instructionally? Now, we know in terms of the AP, the overarching question for this platform is, does, does, my, does my assistant principalship benefit my school academically? So I tweaked it to say, does my leadership benefit my school instructionally just hold up that mirror somebody and ask yourself ask yourself does my leadership or over the past several days does has my leadership benefited my teachers 
instructionally? Has it benefited my school instructionally? Take a hard look at yourself. I'm going to do a Sean Hurt right now. I'm talking good, right? That's what Sean says every Saturday. I'm talking good, y'all. So, so listen. So then let me say that differently. Is there a correlation? Watch this, y'all. Is there a correlation between my leadership and student academic outcomes? Woo! Let me hit you with that again. Is there a correlation between my leadership and student academic outcomes? That's that's what today's session is all about, man. Let's go. Let's go. You know, I, I, I wrote a note on my paper here. I see. And I skip right over it. I put an asterisk, man. Can, can you give me permission real quick to deviate for a hot second? I won't do a sermon on this. But I wrote a note, wrote it in 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 ink. I didn't even type it just to remind me. And I, I skipped it. Yesterday, September 15th, was the 60th anniversary of the bombing at the, at the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, where Denise McNair, Carol Robertson, Cynthia Wesley, Addie Mae Collins, the four little girls lost their lives. I cannot do the rest of this broadcast without at least mentioning them. I did a whole piece on Facebook. You can read that on my page from yesterday, but I had to at least mention them as well. And then there's a fifth little girl, and a lot of, fe a lot of people don't know about that. And then, in fact, not only is there a fifth little girl, but there's also two little boys, right? I'm not going to get into that right now. That wasn't at the church. I just want to highlight the four little girls and the fifth little girl, Sarah Collins Rudolph, who's one of my, my, my wife and I, our friend. We met her when I was speaking in New Brunswick many years ago, but she was, she was also caught up in that bomb blast. She lost her vision. She's the sister. The reason I had Addie Mae Collins last is because that's her sister. So her sister perished in the bomb in the, in in in, in, in this racist bomb blast but sarah survived it but she lost her sight but doctor doctors were able to restore it so she's still amongst us she is alive and uh, alive and well you can go to her facebook page and check her out all the time she posts about uh, about the 16th street baptist church bombing rather frequently she her name is sarah s-a-r-a-h collins rudolph right on Facebook. So I had to mention that. I see you, Tashar Smith-King, right down there where I'm talking about it. I don't, I don't see. Oh, DeLacy. I see you, Dr. DeLacy Davis. So I just wanted to mention that, y'all. I'm not going to do a I'm not gonna do a soliloquy on that today. Had I had I seen it earlier, I probably would have, but I, I, I missed it. All right, let's go. Um, school has changed, y'all. It's changed. The pandemic changed school as we knew it. I don't know that school as we knew it was necessarily a great thing. I don't know. You know, they, I, I got into I got into the education business because of what it was. So I don't know that it was where we wanted it to be. But it has changed and we have to change with it. And that's including what we do instructionally. Right. It's including what we do instructionally. So. I've said on this platform many times, I've said it in front of my audiences many times, I'll say it again. When I visit a school, I want to be able to see the leadership without having to see the leader. Let me say that again for anyone who's never heard me say that before. When I visit a school, my, my focus is on being able to see the leadership without having to see the school. I'm sorry, the leader, right? See the leadership without having to see the leader. I don't want to see you. I want to see the leadership. See, leader is the person, the human being. But leadership is this intangible, this thing of what you do. And then its impact, its effects when you're not present. Right? So if I'm going somewhere to work with a school district or work with a school, the true test of, of, of me being there and of them paying me to be there is what they're able to do when I'm no longer there. That's the true test of my work. But it's also the true test of your work, not you being physically present in all spaces of the building. But when you're not present in all spaces of the building, what is happening in the building? So when I visit a school, I want to see the leadership without seeing the leader. And there, there, there's some areas that I want to highlight the culture of the building. I want to look at the. I want I want to just take in the culture and be able to 
to feel the leadership. I always say the culture of a school is a reflection of the leadership of the building. So I want to be able to take in the culture without seeing you, principal, seeing you, assistant principal. I just want to be able to feel that that energy of the culture of the building. And there, there, there's my man, Warley Williams, just tuned in. So he's here. Right. So uh, I, I, I talked about you big time, Principal Williams. So you have to rewind this thing later to hear it. I think I talked about you twice. Right. So the culture of the building, that's number one. Number two, the climate. The culture is like the lifestyle, how we're living in the building. The climate is like what you feel, the mood of the building. So I want to I want to gauge that mood. The energy of the building. The morale of the building, and particularly the teachers. The equity in the building, does it exist? Procedurally, who are we? I want to see all that. The leadership without having to see the leader. The cleanliness and the upkeep of the school. I was in Principal Warley Williams School yesterday. That place was spotless, man. I could have eaten, I could have, I wouldn't do this. I could have eaten dinner off the floor. <laughs> it, I mean, it was, I, you know, and, and I didn't even tell him that I was looking at it through that particular lens. I just didn't bother to mention it. But the place was immaculate, man. Kudos to the leadership and obviously kudos to the custodial staff. So the cleanliness and the upkeep of the building. I want to see, that's leadership. And I want to see that without having to see the leader. And then the overall management of the building. I want to be able to see that. But here's the one that I want to focus on this morning. Instructionally. Instructionally. I want to be able to see the leadership instructionally without having to see the leader. So let's go to that question that you got that you see on the screen, man. I got 10 of them for you. I'm, and I told you, I'm taking my time singing these love songs, man. It's this. I'm, I'm probably going to be longer than I normally am. Right. But I'm, I'm going I'll tell you, I'm doing this whole session. Right. So what is as, as 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 you see on the screen on the on the screen, what exactly is instructional leadership and what does it mean to my practice as an AP and new principal? You know, it's an interesting question as I as, as I use that as a segue into going into this topic today, because I don't know that any two people would have the same answer. I don't know that there's a right answer. There's probably some wrong answers, but I don't know that there's necessarily the quintessential right answer to the bill, to the question. Right. And so y'all hear me stuttering because every time I look at this thread and I see like keywords, I, I, I articulate the word and it has nothing to do with anything I'm talking about. Right. So excuse me for that. So what is instructional? What exactly is instructional leadership? Well, as I was sitting on the plane the other day, I started just kind of brainstorming some some key areas of what instructional leadership would be for me. Right. And, and I want you to either write these down. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm super slow, but I'm going to say I'm slow enough, perhaps. or just watch the video later and uh, and you'll get it. But I'm saying here it's it's an ongoing focus on coaching the teachers that you supervise instructionally inclusive of maximizing your time in the classroom sean her who's on here he'll tell you in a minute you got to spend about 80 percent of your time in the classroom he'll tell you that in a minute right so coaching the teachers on the an ongoing focus on coaching the teachers that you supervise instructionally inclusive of maximizing your time in the classroom hit that share button hit that retweet hit that repost tag somebody uh Put me in the in, in in them Facebook groups with leadership, whatever it is. Let folks know we talking instructional leadership now. So, so I'm saying this to you. Since school started, who have you been relative to this foot this first bullet point? Who have you been? Right? Valerie said key word ongoing. And that's and I'm gonna use that word with all eight of these bullet points. Ongoing coaching ongoing focus on coaching the teachers that you supervise instructionally by the way instructionally 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 inclusive of maximizing your time in the classroom number two an ongoing focus on the academic goals and vision of your school 
I don't know why I made this that this session so long. I ain't, man, it's gonna take me a long time. I'm a, I'm in question one. It's eleven forty one, man. I got ten questions. Listen, the acad ongoing focus on the academic goals and vision of your school. Here's the question, though: What are the academic goals? And does everybody in that building that breathes know them? Not just your your leadership team. Not just your teaching staff, but I but, but newsflash, I meet a lot of teachers that don't know what the goals are, what the objectives are, what the benchmarks are. They don't know. I meet them. They tell me. I don't know. That's the principle. That's not good. If you are in that building and you breathe, that means your custodial staff, your security staff, your nursing staff, your secretarial staff, your paraprofessional staff, your maintenance staff, your librarian, your child study team, and whomever else, they got to know the goals in the vision of the school too, right? That, that's, everybody in the building has to be conversant in where we're going, what we're about, right? I could throw the word mission in there as well. They need to be, they need to be conversant in the mission. But in this case, I'm talking instructional leadership they got to know them goals in that vision of that school. Number three, an ongoing focus on the academic program of your school. I'm talking about instructional leadership. How you an instructional leader and you are not conversant, you are not focused upon the overall academic program of your school. When, when, when you put that in the context of curriculum, that's the lifeblood of the school. So it's an ongoing focus. I understand somebody that it's easy to get bogged down into the mess that you really don't want to deal with. I understand that. But that speaks to the culture of the school. If you find that your leader, your AP, assistant principal, and you are dealing with mess, crap, minute minutia all day long, it's not because this stuff is 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 something that's just going to it like like inevitable inevitably going to happen in your school because of the the, the where your school is situated the neighborhood whatever no no it's not that it's the culture of your building and there's got to be attention given to the culture of the building that allows you to be who you want to be but more importantly, who you need to be as leader instructionally in that building. You got to give attention to that culture. Next one, the an ongoing focus. We are on that question on the screen, an ongoing focus on individual student academic attendance and discipline data. Do we know the academic data of the students in our building. Which students? All of them. Better word than all though, is as you got those of you that know my work, each of them. That way we ain't leaving nobody out. Is there an ongoing focus on the individual student data? Now I don't mean necessarily you know all that data, but I am saying you're paying attention to it. But for the teacher, that teacher got to know that data as if it's the data of him or herself. Because by extension, it is. So, so this ongoing focus on the, acad the individual student academic data. But you know something? You can't talk academic data without talking attendance data. They go hand in glove. You got you, you got to talk attendance data because if you because if your attendance data is saying that you have students with absences any given week or month. So let's say, for example, elementary classroom, so students spending most of the day in one room, but you miss two days. So you miss almost 16 hours of instruction. Well, there's a correlation there. And now let's say to someone that has more chronic absenteeism. Well, there's a correlation there. 
between my academic performance and my, atten my, my attendance at school. So if I'm instructional leader, I can't just study, it. I, I can't just focus on academics and I'm not looking at who's in the building on a consistent basis or who's not in the building and why. So, hey, somebody, this is instructional leadership according to Principal Kefele. I'm saying to you, you cannot be an instructional leader at an optimal level if you're not paying attention to student data. But hey, let me throw this other one in here. Staff data, a staff attendance data, right? So if I got teachers who are out, I mean, once a month, that's a lot. A teacher may not say that, but a leader certainly will. If a teacher's out once a month, that's a lot and it's going to impact instruction exponentially so the ongoing focus on individual student academic data student attendance data but i got another one student discipline data thank you uh, dr mabry student discipline data that data matters because if that if that youngster happens to be disrupting class and happens to be in a classroom with a teacher with poor classroom management, which for me, a better word is, is an inability to create a culture that prevents the behavior from occurring. That impacts on instruction. That impacts on learning. That impacts on academic performance. So therefore, once again, what is in it? The question on the screen, what exactly is instructional leadership and what does it mean to my practice as an AP and new principal? Well, in this case, I'm saying the on it's an ongoing focus on the individual student academic achievement, uh, student data, I should say, student individual student academic data, student ind student individual attendance, and student individual student discipline data. Oh man. It matters. It matters. Let's go. We talk in instructional leadership. Next one, the ongoing focus on the aggregate academic attendance and discipline data of your school. That aggregate data matters because when them cities, I mean, when them states are giving you those letter grades, right? <laughs> Jersey doesn't do those letter grades, but a whole lot of states do. When they're giving you those letter grades, I see you, Michael Zeke Walker. Good to see you too, my brother. When those, when those states are giving you those letter grades, <laughs> they're not looking at that student individual data. They're looking at your aggregate data. They just want to see what percentage of your students are proficient at, at, at particular grade levels. That's all, that's, that's all they're looking at, right? I, you know, in here in Jersey, they released the test scores of uh, all the Jersey schools. So I spent a considerable, a considerable amount of time on, um, I think it was Tuesday night when I got back home from um, from East Texas, looking at all these schools' data, particularly the urban schools in New Jersey, and 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 they put the aggregate data in. That's what they put in, right? That data matters because because that data is the is is the assessment of your leadership performance. See when they, see when folks are looking at you, and you notice know it's just your brother reinforcing it. When they're looking at the, the 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 aggregate data, they're evaluating the principal of the building. That's 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 the bottom line. They're looking at you, right? So you got to pay attention to that aggregate data because it's a reflection of your leadership, right? So the aggregate academic attendance and discipline data of your school. Next, what is instructional leadership? An ongoing focus on the environmental factors that impact the students that attend your school. Once again, an, an ongoing focus on the environmental factors that give you, where am I at? That, that, uh, that impact the students that attend your school. Oh, Jersey gives you a number now, Stallings? I didn't know that. So, so let's, let's, let's talk about that later because I, I, I need to be informed, right? So, so I'm, saying, I'm saying here, you can't ignore, as much as we want to say, look, my school is, we, we, we are going to create something different from the environment out there when the environment is challenging. 
mean, the bottom line is the environment is there. And the children are coming from that environment. You can't pretend that that environment out there is not there. You can't pretend that home life is, is not what it is. It is. And that youngster's going back to both at the end of the school day, the neighborhood and home. So you can't pretend that that's not there and it doesn't play a role in terms of student outcomes, right? So an ongoing focus on the environmental factors because the question becomes, okay, so how do we adjust as it relates to those factors out there? What, what are we going to do differently? Like, like we're in this particular zip code. If we were in that zip code, then maybe those environmental factors are not relevant. But because we're in this particular zip code, we have to consider those factors and then make sure that we become relevant to youngsters who are growing up in that particular environment so that this school wins. So I'm putting that in the context of who you are instructionally. Let's go. An ongoing focus on the skill sets, hear me somebody, what is instructional leadership? An ongoing focus on the skill sets, experiential backgrounds, growth and progress of the teachers that teach at your school. Mm. Mm. I want to give that one to you again. What is instructional leadership? An ongoing focus on the skill sets, the experiential backgrounds, the growth, the progress, the development of the teachers that teach at your school, particularly the ones that you supervise. There's that word again, Valerie, it's ongoing. It, it ain't beginning of the year, now let me move on. Nah, it's ongoing, it's ongoing, right? So let's keep that in mind. I got two more. What is, what is instructional leadership? An ongoing focus on you your own growth and development as a leader of instruction in your school. Hmm. Let me come again. What is instructional leadership? An ongoing focus on you. This person. On you. Your own professional growth. Your own professional development as a leader of instruction in your school. Hmm. Hmm. Got to consider. It. So I'm saying all that to say this. Everything I just gave you, I know you're going to have to rewind this video, man. But I'm saying all that to say and determining how you and others in leadership in leadership in your building will lead your school toward ensuring that teaching is occurring at the highest levels. Again, that teaching is occurring at the highest levels while simultaneously learning is, learning is occurring at the highest level. So teaching is occurring at the highest levels. Learning is occurring at the highest levels because of the collaboration of everybody in your building who is, who is in that capacity of instructional coach, instructional leader. So this is not limited to administrators by any stretch of the imagination. So I wrote this self-reflective question that I want to I want to throw at you. It says, if student discipline is the primary impediment, and we know that this is not the case in all environments, but in, in many urban environments, rural environments, it is. If student discipline is the primary impediment between me being an effective instructional leader, as opposed to a full-time disciplinarian, what measures can I, will I take to be the instructional leader I was trained to be in grad school? Hmm. See, I'm saying to you, you could be a great disciplinarian. You know, you in there, you writing up kids, and I mean, you reading referrals of, of of kids who are written up, and you giving them these words. You know, I call it preaching sermons. You know, and so you you could do twenty sermons in a day, right? That ain't that ain't changing that that ain't changing that letter grade. That ain't changing that academic performance, because there's nothing about them sermons that you preached in that office that shifted the instruction in the classroom. Hopefully, that youngster took back 
to the class what was necessary. But you got to remember that behavior may not have been something that just happened innately. That behavior could be a reflection on what's happening in that classroom instructionally. You bore me out of my mind in anything. I'm liable to engage in behaviors that are not my normal behaviors. Let me give you an example. I go to a sporting event. It's a blowout. It's, it's, it's uneventful. I'm sitting in the stands like this. I'm nodding off because I'm bored out of my mind. Right? I'm not going to be disruptive and start messing with the people in the stadium because I don't know them. But if I would, but if it's, if I'm around with people I know, I might start talking to them, which is the same behavior one might see in a classroom. There's something about this this instruction. There's something about this experience that's got me bored out of my mind, and now I'm engaging in behaviors which are undesirable. So now I get sent to you. You preach me a sermon, and then you send me back to the same environment, and you expect me to change. I, hey, AP. Hey, dean of students. Hey, principal. Hey, whomever was gave me that sermon. Okay, you preached to me, but you didn't change my circumstances. I'm still going back to that same mess that I left from. So now I'm saying, hey, AP. Hey, principal. It's not the kid all the time. It's the environment that the kid is subjected to every day. And that's why you got to be that instructional leader. That's why. Because there may be aspects of instruction, aspects of teaching, aspects of interaction, aspects of engagement that you're not seeing because you're in your office preaching sermons. If you want to preach sermons, go, go, to, go to seminary and get a degree in theology, and then you can preach every Sunday morning. But if you're a leader, it ain't about that. It's about you leading that school instructionally let's go number two man let me let me let me get this question on the screen for y'all told you man i i said i'm gonna give y'all a little something something this week now now those of you that have been with me for a long time and you heard me say that i don't put uh, uh text on the screen because my clients might question that i've never done this presentation anywhere this this i i created this literally last week for this platform so, so can't no client say, wait a minute, you did that with us. No, I didn't. <laughs> All right, here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Um, and, and, and by the way, that question I just asked you, if, if, if student discipline is an impediment, I have an answer for you. Despite, I mean, outside everything I just said, the answer is in the past 176 weeks, we have been answering that question. All these guests? And myself, we have been answering this question for you. So if you haven't seen those past 172 uh, 176 sessions, please binge watch those. It's all there. <laughs> it's all there because I don't I don't profess to know it all. That's why I bring all these guests, right? And I see a lot of them right here on the screen right now, right? I see Tashara, I see I see Sheikha, I see Tammy, I see Sean, and I see Melissa who's coming on, and then others I haven't invited yet. So yeah, 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 we good, we good, we good. I see Yolanda, she coming on here. You know, so uh, here we go. All right, number two, y'all. Do I understand that my main priority is student achievement and the continued improvement of instruction? Whew. <laughs> I got to drink some water on that one, man. I got to pause, man. That's like the question. That's, that's the quintessential question. Do I understand that my main priority is student achievement and the continued improvement of instruction. Mm. Here y'all, get your mirror out and ask yourself. I don't even need you to go back to the beginning of the year. Just reflect on the past week. And as you reflect on the past week and assess your performance over the past week, Ask yourself, what percentage of my day was devoted to student achievement and the continued improvement of instruction? That's it right there. Just ask yourself. You don't need to wait for an evaluator of record to tell you that. Ask yourself, 
reflect back on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what percentage of my five days last week was devoted to student achievement and the continued improvement of instruction? Why am I asking that question? Because of the first part of it where it says, do I understand that my main priority, period, or question mark, do I understand that my main priority, Sean Hurt says, sleep in the classroom principles. And, 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 and I guess my what I used to say this consistent with Sean was I would say, send me my mail <laughs> to the classrooms. Right. So same thing. I'm, I'm living there. So I just want before I get into kind of breaking this apart, I just want you to think about that. Who were you last week? But here's a better question. Who will you be next week? Will you have watched this broadcast? Heard what was said? Had went a whole week that had nothing to do with a student achievement and continued improvement in instruction. And then you go back next week and do the same thing. Then you know something that's shame on you. See, that's shame on you. You're going to go back and do the same thing. But principal Kefele, man, you, do you realize the stuff that's going on in my school? Well, let me ask you this question. Did you not realize that before you decided you wanted to be a school leader? Did you think things were perfect? So you were work, walking into a perfect situation? Did you not know that that's what goes on in schools? And then great people come in and they shift it and make it extraordinary? Did you not know that? I mean, did you discover that there are challenges in schools after you got the job? Of course not. You said, and if I if you didn't, you could put it right in this thread and I'll read it out loud. You said, if they appoint me as assistant principal, if they appoint me as a principal, all that mess that I'm aware of that goes on in schools, that's going to change once I got the position. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Put it in that thread. Tell me I'm lying. You know that's what you said. And I know that's what I said. I know that's what I said. I said, put me in there. I, how I'm going to get in there and say, oh my God, the, the, the kids are going, they're, they're going crazy in here. The teachers are going crazy in here. Y yeah. <laughs> I thought that's why you wanted the job so you could fix that. That's what that's about. Don't, don't, you, can't come at me with, you can't come at me with those excuses. Now, for somebody sitting here like, why are you acting like he arguing with somebody? Because I feel some energy on the other side of my camera. That's why. I feel somebody making some kind of excuses on the other side of my camera saying he don't understand the real world. He don't understand what I'm up against. Well, hey, somebody, if that's your position, my suggestion is to resign. And let somebody else come in there, because I promise you, somebody can come in there and make that place a blue ribbon school, that underperforming school, and make it blue ribbon, Title I Distinguished School Award, and all the others. It takes leadership, and leadership is not for everyone. Leadership is for special individuals. I don't, I don't aspire, I, I, I don't subscribe to the born leader theory. But one certainly got to be open to learning, to be tutored, to be mentored, to seek out information on their own. But ain't no way in the world you could come at me and tell me that somebody can't come in that school and make that school compete with the school that got all the kids that was born into wealth and privilege. That underperforming school, 100% free and reduced lunch, gangs running around all over the city, Crime all over the city, drugs all over the community, absent fathers all over the community. But but something about that school, something about your leadership, it's an aberration in that town. It's performing at the highest levels. And all them kids are getting ready to go to the next level with their careers in college. That's leadership. Enough said. 
Let's get back to the story. Do I understand that my main priority is student achievement and the continued improvement of instruction? Hey, y'all, hit that share button, hit that retweet, hit that repost, tag somebody. Uh, go go put put this in them Facebook groups, whatever it is. Let somebody call somebody, hit them up on the phone. Yo, Kafele, I'm gonna use Sean Hurt's words. I ain't gonna claim these. Yo, Kafele talking good this morning. Yo, call them, man. Let them know I'm in the building, man. Here we go. 12 o'clock and I'm on question number two. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right. So with that question, what I'm saying to you, you know, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. I did my administrative internship in 19, um, 90, um, 90, what, what year was that? 96. Yeah. 90, 97. I did my administrative internship in 96, 97 school year. That's what it was. And Became administrator in 98. And my mentor, man, he used to come by every day, schooling me, schooling me, schooling me. And he eventually became my boss. But he said to me during the mentorship, he said, don't forget, Kefele, the purpose of your supervision of staff is the continued improvement of their instruction. That's what he said. He said, the purpose of your supervision of staff will be the continued improvement of their instruction. Man, I'm thinking to myself, what? Because in my mind, I'm going in there to be the disciplinarian. Because in my because that stereotype of the AP was in my in my psyche. So he said that it went in this ear and came out this ear. So then two years after that, I'm a principal. I was an AP a year, then I'm principal. My test scores I inherited were low. My first year, they got lower. He called me right to his office, man. Middle of the day, like, yo, <laughs> come report to my office. He didn't say yo, though. Right? So I went to his office. He's like, what happened? I said, what do you mean, doc? He put the test scores in front of me. What happened? Doc, you know how hard I work? Man, you see my car on the weekends at the school because he lived in the city of the, of the district. You see my week, my car out there Saturday. You see my car out there Sunday. You know I'm doing 14-hour days during the week. He said, I ain't questioning how hard you work. I'm questioning how smart you work. Woo! Ouch! That's what he said. Man, that thing stung, man, like a like a wasp sink sting. So it took me like two weeks to recover from it because I was mad. But once I recovered, I said, yeah, he was right. I don't work. I don't work smart. I just work hard. I had to I had to fix that. Imagine that grown man saying to another grown man, I'm questioning how smart you work. Man, that hurt, man. But I needed that. That thing got me to where I am now. I needed that. So I'm saying to you, how you working, somebody? I know you working hard, but I'm asking you, are you working smart? Are you working smart so that that culture could be what you need it to be so that you can be that instructional leader that your students require you to be for your staff? See, but then... It's, it's easy to, and, I, and, I, and I'm saying this because I don't want anybody to get caught up into this. It's easy to listen to a, a, a AP and New Principals Academy on a Saturday and get fired up and go hard on Monday and then start the wane on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. See, you, you got to take that energy, man, and you got you to gotta hold it in. You got you to gotta hold it, man. You got to hold it. You got to embrace it. Right. You can't you can't get fired up in this in, in the fire is only burning for a day. That fire got to be raging throughout the course of the year. I'm not telling you not to have self-preservation, self-care, but I am saying to you that when you in that when you in that leadership role, you got to lead that school. Let's go. Number three. Let me put that. Let me put that question up for you. See, that one as long as number one. Right. We're going to get through this thing. Y'all Y'all don't don't, don't leave me. Y'all Y'all hang with me. In fact, bring some more people in here. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Number three. What do I know about excellent pedagogy beyond who I was as a teacher? Huh. It's an interesting question. Can no client come to me and say, you did a whole free session and we we paid you X number of dollars. Hey, client, I ain't never taught this before in my life, man. I, I created this thing over the course of the week. That's why I'm putting text on the screen. What do I know about excellent pedagogy beyond who I was as a teacher? Let me let me tell you what I'm saying with that one. 
hear me, somebody. There are players in, in the sports world who were some of the best athletes to ever live. But, and I'm not even going to drop names. Because because I you know I don't know who watches these videos. It, it, you, you, LeBron James could be peeping these on the sneak tip. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, right? They could be watching on the sneak tip. So I don't I don't I don't want to drop no names. Like we never gonna meet Principal Cafele, but we watch him sometimes, right? So 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 here's the thing. Listen, y'all. You got athletes who were at, who excelled at their sport, at the top of their game but can't coach a lick. Can't be the general manager. Doesn't know how to be a general manager worth a dime. But you give them that ball and they could perform magic. They could perform miracles. But, but what they did, they can't translate. They can't translate. I see you, Byron Carter. Good to see you, man. That's my colleague from we, we, when we were young boys, boy. <laughs> right? And he's starring, right? So it doesn't translate. I like to think, hear me, somebody. It's going to be a bold admission, but I'm going to say it to you anyway. I, I am convinced that I'm a, I, I know I was a good principal. I know that. And how do I know it? Because my students told me. That's 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 all I need. But in my mind, I'm a better teacher of leadership than I was a leader. And I'm proud of that. Because I don't want to just be a leader, but I can't transfer. it. I want to be able to transfer it to somebody else. I want to be able to teach a teacher. I don't want to just have the skill set like 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 in vocational technical schools. I know this to be true all over the country because I was a leader of vocational technical schools. You got people in those shop classes, welding, automotive, plumbing, etc., who were superstars at their craft, plumbing, welding, carpentry, automotive, etc., but they can't teach it. See, they know their craft. They could take an engine and take it apart and put it back together blindfolded. They could weld anything. They could build a house without looking at it, right? But then to take that and teach it to somebody else, they like, yeah, you know, you you supposed to in their mind, you supposed to get it like I got it. No, see, a lot of folks develop a skill set in certain areas, but they can't teach what they know. So this question on the screen, number three, what do I know about excellent pedagogy beyond who I was as a teacher? So in other words, you had a certain skill set and a lot of your skill set, it wasn't just what you learned. It was who you are internally. I know who I was as a teacher was just an extension of me. I'm clear on that. And I have no issue with that. I have no problem saying that publicly to the world. I know that my skill set, I'm teacher of the year, building level, district level, county level, New Jersey state finalist teacher of the year, my fourth year teacher. But I know that a great deal of that came from me internally, not something that I learned from somebody else. Nobody taught me how to teach. In fact, my administrators seldom came to my classroom. And when they did come, they were typically applauding me, right? They weren't in there teaching me nothing. So that was just me. But the thing is, can a me who had innate skill transfer that to teaching someone how to teach better that's what the question is asking I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb on this one my mother's 88 she's on here right now she probably just jumped up when i said my mother like oh, where's where's he going with this my mother was teacher of the year y'all didn't know that my mother was teacher of the year in edison i never had this conversation with my mother but I have enough just intuition to know my mother's skill set wasn't from no P, no professional learning. My mother just knew how to teach. Maybe that's where I got it from. She just knew how to teach. So she was teacher of the year. So maybe that's where I inherited from. I didn't want to be a teacher. 
But somewhere along the way, I became one and did what she did in a short period of time, four years. So I'm saying to you, as leader somebody, if you're a leader, you were probably very good as a teacher. And someone saw fit to give you an opportunity as a leader, as an AP, and then a principal. Unless you bypass the AP, you in charter school or wherever, and they bypass it, threw you in there, and you found out real quick <laughs> that you don't know nothing, right? But that's a whole other story. So, or as people would say, a whole nother story. Ain't no such word as another, but everybody uses it, right? So, <laughs> so <laughs> my wife had to laugh at that one. Another. What's what's another? <laughs> uh, like like N U T H E R. Another. A whole nother story, right? <laughs> so, 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 so listen, y'all, I lost my whole train of thought. Okay, here we are. So how you, like, so you were great in the classroom. You were great in the classroom. But it's more, it's more to that teacher developing into a superstar teacher than just your skill set. And you know something? Some of your skill set is not transferable. Here's why. Because some of your, your back in the day, your teaching skill set is yours alone. It's you. It's not necessarily transferable to the next person because their personality is so different from yours. So now you're trying to get them to do what you used to do and you scratching your head or even mad that they not doing what you used to do because they're not you. I'm not expecting a leader per se to take a microphone in the morning and rock a school, rock the roof off the building the way I used to do it. That's not everybody's personality. I will encourage them to speak life into their school, but I'm not going to say do it like Kefele did it. Because I used to go buck wild. And everybody's not going to do it that way. Everyone's not going to do it that way. And I tell them, because I'll show them some videos of me doing it. I'm like, you, if that's not your personality, you can't do that. You find what's going to work for you. Like, remember, everyone wants to be like Mike. No, you can't be Michael Jordan. <laughs> That's my, ain't, ain't, We ain't never going to see another Michael Jordan. And that's including Kobe Bryant. He was not Michael Jordan. He was Kobe Bryant. So I'm saying to you, there's only one you. So the true test of who you are instructionally, your instructional leadership is how you're able to teach a teacher or better word, coach a teacher into greatness by not necessarily holding them accountable to being an imitation of you, of who you were of emulating who you were. No, you have developed a skill set. You have developed a knowledge, an expertise, a, a plethora of strategies that you can now share with a teacher, coach a teacher into experimenting within that classroom, as opposed to you trying to build the next principal so-and-so, meaning yourself, the next AP so-and-so, meaning yourself, that ain't going to happen. Right. So I feel like I'm getting ready to contradict myself and say, maybe I won't exhaust this session today because I'm only on number three and I see three got a, a whole lot of parts to it. So let me let me let me give you these parts in number three. Number one sub parts, it says, what is my data telling me about the needs of my students beyond aggregate test scores? Hmm. Let me say that again, because I'm not putting that on the screen. What is my, I'm only giving you the, the overall overarching questions. What is my data telling me about the needs of my students beyond aggregate test scores? So when you think about question on the screen, question three on the screen, what do I know about excellent pedagogy beyond who I was as a teacher? Well, number one, we got to look at the data. <laughs> What's, what is the data telling me about the needs of my students beyond aggregate test scores? Aggregate Aggregate test scores are good in terms of what I was saying before, letter grades, all that kind of thing. But now we're talking about the individual student, right? Number two, what sort of professional learning am I ensuring that my teachers are receiving relative to pedagogy for the students that they serve, right? For the students that we serve. What sort of PD, 
So again, I want to re keep referring to number three. What do I know about excellent pedagogy beyond who I was in the in the classroom as a teacher? So that second question, what sort of PD? What sort of professional learning? Am I ensuring that my teachers are receiving relative to pedagogy? See, that's you. Yeah, you got district supervisors. Yeah, you got um, uh, district directors and assistant superintendents and superintendents who are steering uh, the district and teachers into certain directions for professional development. But that's a district. And if it's a large district, we're talking multiple schools, you know, 20 schools, 40 schools, 60 schools, 80 schools, 100 schools, whatever it is, 100 plus schools. But that doesn't necessarily speak to the individual unique needs of your building of your staff. So I'm therefore asking, therefore, what sort of professional learning am I as instructional leader, assistant principal, principal, new principal, am I ensuring that my teachers are receiving relative to pedagogy? Maybe the district PD that they're sending everybody to is not going to speak to your unique needs within your building. You got to go here as it relates to your building. So with that, I said, I got these sub questions. Now I got five sub, sub questions. I tell you, I was working this week, man, on the road speaking, but on them planes, putting this together. So I'm saying here, these are just, let me go through them quickly. Keep in mind that our successes in the classroom may not have necessarily prepared us to be experts pedagogically, as, as what I said earlier. So we must grow in this area as well. So you cannot rely on those practices that made you great when you were a teacher because there are more practices than that. What experts are we bringing into the school? So who are we bringing in to talk to? Our, and I don't mean like some superstar that wrote 20 zillion books at, at, at the, at the, from you know teaching at the university and all that stuff. I mean, just who are you bringing in there? What is their expertise? And how do they add value to your staff? What role, what roles do my instructional coaches play? And what measures have I put in place for them to be optimally effective? I can't wait for October 21st when I bring Nicole Turner on here, who I consider the, the, the instructional coaching guru of America. Young lady, too. She, she'll be my guest talking about this. But listen, I'm, I'm going to say this much about it. You could have instructional coaches on your staff, leader. But those instructional coaches could be in the same bargaining unit as your teachers. And when, when someone of the same bargaining unit is coming into my classroom and giving me advice, right, giving me coaching on my, on, on, on my pedagogy, that doesn't always end well. It end, How it ends starts with you it doesn't end with you but it starts with you in terms of the culture that you create that allows that person to uh, to have credibility going in but then that person has to be trained that person has to be taught how to interact with staff who are on the in the same bargaining unit with them or if you're not a unionized district who are just equal with them in terms of pay Right. So now, because if that person is acting like an administrator. But doesn't have administrative authority and then they're walking into a classroom to observe instruction. And, and to provide coaching, but the two are not on the same page, they're here, they're missing each other, then that may not end very well. It may, it will probably be counterproductive. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. I live that. See, I'm transparent. When you're in your 60s, man, you don't, you don't care about what people say and think about you, man. I live that. Them women were not cool with each other. And, and, and as, I, as I reflected on it, I had to own that. That was me. But it was young me. I'm still learning in, the, at that, in that phase of my leadership. I was young. Right. So I'm saying here that you got instructional coaches. Fine. Hear me, somebody. Don't just say go coach. No, you got to work with them. 
because they got to have superior people skills. They've got to know how to go in there and talk to folks when they're in the same bargaining unit or in the same status because they are not administrators. That's where you come in. That is a part of your instructional leadership. I'm not going to get deeper into that because we're going to go hard on that on October 21. So put that on your calendar. I will be live from Montego Bay, Jamaica, but we're going to be on here. So put that on your calendar and we're going to go hard on the Cole Turner and I are talking about that. Next, um, are we engaged in book studies on good pedagogy? So when I say book studies, I'm not I could be talking about staff, but in this case, I'm talking about the leaders. Like the leaders engage in book studies and, and, and amongst so, so, so you, you and your team, if it's just two of you, then the two of you and y'all are reading the same literature. Doesn't have to be a book. It could be a blog. It could be an article. It could be a journal, whatever. But you guys are engaged. You all, I should say, my daughter doesn't like that word, guys. So so you all are engaged in this book study or this whatever study, this literature study. And then you're you're growing together. Hey, principal, you ain't too big that you can't grow with your AP. All right. Don't so 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 don't think that you can't. So the two of you growing together, the three of you, the four of you, the five of you, whatever it is. And then lastly, are you watching videos together on effective pedagogy? Right. Are you watching videos on effective pedagogy together? Right. Because the bottom line, once again, you got to learn. You got to grow. You can't you can't rely on your, your superstardom from the days you taught. And now let me just take what I did in the classroom. And that's what I expect of all 50 teachers in my building. Nah, man, come on. That ain't even realistic. Because a lot of what you were doing is based on who you are. I mean, like like this Saturday platform, 177 Saturdays. Make no mistake about it. My delivery. This is who I am. Professionally, I ain't rest necessarily this personally, privately, but who professionally, you see in the real authentic principal cafe. But the next person, they may not come across like me. I'm not saying there's anything better about my way. I'm just being me. But someone else, they start their live stream. They may not talk like me. Or I've seen this now. I've seen this. I this I've seen. I'm gonna just leave it right there. I've seen people launch their program. And they try to be me. <laughs> My wife's seen it too. And other people I know have seen it. So they'll try to be me. And all you doing is faking the funk. And then your nose got to grow. You look like Pinocchio up there trying to be somebody else. No, be you. That's all you can be. You can't be somebody else. Be you. Don't, don't get on there trying to be me, trying to be Sean, trying to be Sheika, trying to be Tammy, trying to be da Josh. Those are my peeps. You know, I got to name them, right? So be you. Be your authentic self. Let's go, man. I got to, I got to, I'm still in number three. Does the pedagogy in my class, oh, this is a big one, man. I don't know how I'm going to get through all this. Does the pedagogy in my classrooms ensure that equity is normalized i see you dan i see you out there does 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 so let me read that again does the pedagogy in my classrooms meaning my the classrooms in my school does my pet does the pedagogy in my classrooms ensure that equity is normalized Woo! Now, now, now the people, so you know, the, the, the people that look at equity as the boogeyman, just me saying equity, they, they'll leave. They'll leave the show, the, the, not show, the, the academy right away. They're like, oh, oh, Kefele just said equity. Bye, y'all. Bye. We don't say equity in our state, right? Hey, y'all, y'all better stop that, that, that insanity, that craziness, that foolishness, right? <laughs> you know, folks out here, <laughs> equity. I, I was with a I was with a group the other day. I say, well, let's talk what it is. Meeting young people where they are, as they are. Let's say it again. Meeting young people where they are, as they are. What part of that would you run away from me for? <laughs> if if anything, you should be running to me, <laughs> right? When we talk about meeting young people where they are. As they are. That's that's what equity is. 
Now, all the other parts, that's just parts that we tie into. But at its core, at its center, at its center meeting the children where they are, dot, 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 as they are, period. Hey, superintendent out there in one of them red states. Hey, principal out there in one of them red states. Hey, teacher out there in one of them red states. Stop believing the hype. Stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Equity is not your enemy. If you're an educator, it's your best freaking friend. Don't forget that. Meeting young people where they are are as they are it is not your enemy it is great amazing phenomenal extraordinary practice that's what it is enough said so therefore the question was does pedagogy in my classrooms does the pedagogy in my classrooms ensure that equity is normalized and as was just said, someone has said, I think it was Valerie, key word, normalize. Equity has to be normal in the classroom. If it's not normal, there's a problem because no two students are alike. And, and you know, people, when they, you know, people mi mis misuse the word diversity. When they use diversity, they, they, they're so frequently thinking race. Well, yes, racial diversity is a real thing, but there's another diversity in this context that I want to highlight. It's called people diversity. So if you got a, a classroom and everybody's the same race, same ethnicity, same culture, same zip code, same experiential backgrounds, guess what? You got diversity because no two of them youngsters are, are, are the same. You still got diversity, right? So... Diversity matters, and there's diversity in every classroom in America, right? So which takes me to this second question. Does pedagogy in my classrooms ensure that cultural relevance in instruction is normalized? Mm. Cultural relevance simply means reading the room. That's all it is. Reading the room. And ensuring that the way I deliver this standard curriculum, because the curriculum is just a lifeless document, like this paper here. This is curriculum, a lifeless document. It's the teacher that gives it life. The teacher breathes life into it based on who's sitting in the classroom. But if you're not that instructional leader, you cannot witness this. You cannot observe this. You don't know what's happening in that classroom. So equity may not be occurring. And if it's not occurring and you're not present, you're not a coach, you're not an instructional leader, you're not living in those classrooms, then inequity is probably the norm. Unless that teacher brings an equity mindset. And now you got youngsters underperforming, if not failing, not because they lack motivation, not because they're apathetic, not because they're lazy, not because they're from a low socioeconomic community, but because they're in a classroom that does not consider their individuality, their cultural identity, and their individual voice. It matters. Equity matters. See, so you you got to be in the game. I went on, I, I did a whole sermon on that a, a couple of weeks ago. You got to be in the game. You can't be on the sidelines and score a touchdown. You can't be in the stands and shoot a three-pointer. You got to be in the game to raise the, 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 the possibility for winning the game. But if you on the game watching, if you on the sidelines watching, if you in the stands watching, you're not in the game. You are a spectator 
of the game. So if you are one who spends your time in the office, preaching sermons, reading emails, taking phone calls, meeting with parents and all the other things, you ain't in the game. You a spectator. You paid for a ticket to watch the game. But it ain't a good game. Because the athletes who are dependent upon to be on the floor, to be on the court, to be on the field, to be on the ice, they ain't in the game. They sitting in the stands. The coach thought you was going to play the game. You bought a ticket, walked through the turnstiles, sat in the stands to watch the game. That ain't going to end well. It ain't going to end well. Because the one that should be competing is watching. The one that should be competing doesn't have a stake in the outcome of the game beyond being a fan. Don't be no fan. Be more than a fan. Be the one that when there's two seconds left on the clock and your team is down by one point, the equivalent of you being that instructional leader is you're going to say to everybody else on that floor, give me the ball. That's what MJ did. That's what Kobe did. Give me the ball. That's got to be the mindset. It's two seconds left on the clock. It's game seven. The championship is on the line. You want the ball or you're going to shrink from it and go somewhere else with the hope they don't, they don't throw the ball your way because you don't want to take the last shot. No, you got to be in this thing. And you got to be willing to take the last shot. That's instructional leadership. Let's go. Man, y'all still rocking with me, man. I can't believe it. So let's go. I'm a, like Sean said, I must be talking good, man. So, so you know, I got one more. Do I understand that who I am as an instructional leader and professional developer is immeasurable? Let me get that to you again. Do I understand that who I am as instructional leader and professional developer is immeasurable? You can't even measure that, man. That's how significant it is that you be that person. That's how significant it is. Now, I'm going to contradict myself because I told y'all I, was, I wasn't I was going to do this whole thing. But I, 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 I'm not even halfway through. So I'm going I'm to give you um, I'm going to give you one more question. And then. I'm a, I'm gonna somehow get the rest of this in. I don't know how, but I, I'll figure it out. I gotta I gotta find a quiet space in my home, which that ain't hard to do, and I gotta figure it out. Right now, now if if I get a bunch of people on here right in this thread say no, no, don't turn, don't go, we we with you, then I'm gonna stay. <laughs> if I get a bunch of people right in the thread, we right here. Don't 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 shut it down yet. We here. Then I'm going to stay on because I ain't got nothing to do until 10 o'clock when Coach Prime is coaching Colorado, what's their name, Buffaloes. Outside of that, I'm good, man. <laughs> I'm a little hot with this Negro League jersey on, but outside. <laughs> My wife called me silly, man. Yo, yo, you can't be calling me silly now. You can't be calling <laughs> Uh, yeah. Let me see. Let me see what y'all saying. Uh, are y'all t- <laughs> y'all telling me to stay? But all right, we 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 gonna hang in there a little bit, y'all. We gonna hang in there. We gonna hang in there. Let me see. Are y'all still coming? Oh man, I'm. <laughs> hey Kim, do me a favor. Put the air on, please. I turned the air off. I thought you know it's like sixty outside. It's it's a it's a hundred in here though, right? <laughs> and bring me a paper towel. Ooh. <laughs> I see you are let Melo Johnson. She's gonna be on here soon. That's the that's the Connecticut assistant principal of the year. She gonna and I and I don't say that figuratively and literally. That's who that is, right? So uh she gonna be here. Yeah, so all right, y'all. Let me keep going then. We'll we'll we'll, we'll go a little bit more. So number four, let me put it on the screen for you. Number four, number four, where are we at here? There we go. Number four. 
Here we go. Um, all right, here we go. Are y'all still telling me to stick around, huh? All right, all right, all right. All right I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Sharon Rice said, please, Mrs. Cafele, put the air on. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, here we go, y'all. Number four. Um, do I have a philosophy? I've shared this in the past, but I'm, I, I decided to bring it back up. Uh, Marsha Poe out there in California, man, she said, keep it going. Do I have a philosophy, beliefs, opinions, and ideas about how children learn based upon my own research, reading, and experiences. Man, that's a lot, man. That's why I was going to cut it off right there, because that's, that's a lot there. But, but here's the thing. You and I can walk into a classroom, and, 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 and if we're not careful, we can become dazzled by instruction that looks really good. Right. It looks good. So we're in there and, and sometimes that which looks good shouldn't look good. <laughs> let me let me let me let me let me let me clarify that point. You, you go into a classroom, it's set up in rows. So you got five rows across six, six desks um, per row. And the students are sitting there very quietly. Right. And the teacher is teaching. And the teacher is able to teach this lesson uninterrupted by students. And they're all sitting there quietly. They, they may be writing notes or they may just be attentive. And that looks really good. The, the, the teacher is energetic and, 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 and you know, and, and it's a lot of enthusiasm like what I have. And, and it really looks good. But then when you start like peeling back some layers and going beneath the surface and that which looks good might not be good at all because now you start looking at the data and the data saying the children aren't learning because they're in a classroom where equality is the strategy not equity equality is the strategy all 25 students are receiving the same thing at the same time, at the same rate, at the same pace, the same instruction using the same modality with the assumption that it will connect with the student at the same portion of the brain, all of them. So in other words, all of them will receive it auditorily, to use that as an example. So on the surface, it looks great. But you start going a little bit deeper, it ain't nothing happening. You might as well have a substitute teacher in the room that the teacher didn't leave lesson plans for. You know what that looks like, right? So therefore, I'm saying to you, you got to go in there with something certain beliefs, certain philosophy about pedagogy and learning, certain opinions, because they're yours, certain ideas rooted in who you are as a leader, as an educator, about how children learn based upon your own research, your own reading and your own experiences, your own study your own interaction with other leaders who do what you do, etc. See, you got to go in there with something. Because if you don't, you're, you're like the two individuals that go to the football game. Young man who happens to be a huge fan of football, former player, now he's just a big fan. He knows football inside and out. He calls homie, his homie, and says, yo, let's go to the game. Well, his homie, they got a lot in common, but what they don't have in common is sports. So his friend doesn't know football. His friend don't know any sport, but that's his boy. That's his homie. So homie, his homie called, let's go to the game. He said, let's go. So he go to the game. So you got two people sitting in the stands in terms of these two. One is a fan. 
One is just a spectator. They're seeing two different things, y'all. That fan knows the intricacies of everything that's happening on the field. The X's and the O's, he could break it down like a coach would do. But that other one, that spectator, that homie, he looking at the game. He like, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I'm having a good time just being in the mix. <laughs> he don't know what he see. Hey, hey, hey Margaret, Mar Mar I'm, I'm going to read that later because it's so long, man, but I'm going to read it. I'm going to definitely read it later. Um. Marguerite, Marguerite, yet. boy, I think I said that right. Um, so yeah, so so Josh, the fan, he he know what's up. Like I took my wife to see the Jets game. Let me, here's the example. I got beat up on my wife real quick now. <laughs> she said, "Hey, <laughs> I took her to see the Jets in the preseason when Aaron Rodgers was still playing, right? So we went to the la the last preseason game. Aaron Rodgers played." Played a few for a few minutes, right? I knew what I was looking at. I understood the offense. I understood the defense and all that. My wife sitting there like, which one is Aaron? <laughs> I'm like, the one right there wearing number eight. <laughs> she don't know what she looking at, man. She just, she just, it's a date night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? It's just date night. Me and the missus at the game. But she don't like which, which one is Aaron? <laughs> so you know, that's the example, y'all. I knew what I was looking at in a game. She was just there. Well, you can't go in the classroom. And and just because it looks good, assume that it is good. It may not be. Are you home, Josh? I see you. It may. That's why you're using that 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 name. I could. I was. I was thrown off by. So I'm saying to you, folks, you got to go in there. I should say, fam, you got to go in there with a certain mentality, man. You got to go in there with certain beliefs about good pedagogy and how children learn. Certain philosophy. Certain opinions certain ideas that are rooted in your research, that are rooted in your professional learning, that are rooted in your reading, that are rooted in your experiences. You can't go in there as no spectator and now you just dazzle because it looks good. It may look good, but it might be horrible. But let's, let's add on to that. Uh, supposing that you went into that classroom. I mean, supposing that you never got into that classroom except for evaluation season. Then that which looks good is being rewarded throughout the course of a year. Because if you're only going in there during evaluation season because, be, 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 because, it's, it's because now it's compliance and it looks really good, and you're going to reward it. You 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 just told teach children who are not learning. I Y'all ain't learning. But that teaching sure they look good. But you don't even know the children are not learning. So you just said, I'm assuming y'all learning because this teaching is looking real good. So I got to assume y'all in here learning. That's what you're saying. You destroying young people. You're hurting them. You're harming them. You're damaging them. As, as Nequinta just said, looks are deceiving. See? So make sure that that's happening. So do I un so so am I a fan or a spectator? Next, do I understand that zip codes matter? Oh, they matter. Because I got to make sure that what's happening in my school speaks to the students who are enrolled in that school, not to the generic student. There's no generic student in any school. You got specifics in there. 
And I got to make sure that what we're doing in that school is speaking to the lives of the children that attend my school. Zip codes matter. Next, do I understand that home learning experiences and the home learning environment matter? Mm. What you saying, Principal Cafele? If I got youngsters in school who have never been read to before, between from birth to three, before they enter school, at, at preschool, oh, that matters. That matters. If I got youngsters in the school and they've been read to every day of their lives from birth to three, oh, that matters. Because now, when, you, when we talk about the difference between the two, <laughs> the difference between the two, you got a youngster in there that's been read to from birth to three that, that probably has a very substantial vo vo uh, vocabulary. But then you got the other youngster who has a very limited vocabulary. It doesn't mean that that youngster doesn't have the capacity to be valedictorian. But do I have the information? So those home those home examples, those, those, those examples in terms of what happens at home, oh, they matter because they impact what happens in the school. It happens, right? So let's go, let's go. So that was it for number four. Let me go to number five and then let me look at my other page because that might be where I cap it off. Um, let me see. Let me go to number five. Let me give you that, let me give you that question. All right, see you soon. <laughs> my wife's leaving. She said goodbye to everybody. <laughs> uh, here we go, y'all. Number five. Um, okay. Does instructional leadership define my primary role as assistant principal and new principal? If not, why not? Let me let me let y'all know what I'm gonna do. This number five, I'm going to exhaust, and then I got five more. So when I I'll figure out how to do a part two, and that will be my part two. So this will be uh so this will call this part one. Matter of fact, it probably won't be till December second, but that'll that'll be when it is, and then I'm gonna get to do a part three and four later in the year. So that's how we do it. But uh but but I encourage you all to go back to weeks five through eleven because a lot of that is there. But I did pull you know I did create a lot of new because of um this life life happens and I get new ideas and you know interacting with people you know all that kind of thing observing instruction and you come up with new new ideas new things so that's how we'll do that so stay with me for this last one and then i'm gonna close it out does instruction does instructional leadership define my primary role as assistant principal and new principal and i'm looking forward to reading all your comments you notice today i didn't put any up because i want i need i can't do i can't be engineer producer and 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 host without a guest. See, when I got a guest, I could sneak and read. I don't have a guest. I, I don't have that luxury. So I'll be reading all these comments this afternoon. All right. So um, does instructional leadership define my primary role as assistant principal and new principal? If not, why not? I got three things for you. Number one, pre-observation conference. I've said this before, but in a different context. Let me say it again. I'm not mad at anybody on the call if you go into a classroom and, and, and observe instruction for a brief period of time and you didn't have a pre-observation conference, particularly for your veteran teachers who don't necessarily need you the way that your young, your newer teachers do. Cause, cause see, equity is not just between teacher and student. Equity is between leader and teacher. Every, every teacher doesn't need you the same way. Equality in terms of how you, how, how, how you relate to teachers is not the strategy. It's not about teaching, treating all your teachers the same when we talk about pedagogy. And see, sometimes it, I, I know definitively there's some of us who think it, it, there's a culture in buildings who, who feel we got to treat them all the same. No, you don't. You got some superstars in there who don't need you like that. But then you got some other folks in there who may be veterans, but they still need you. And then you got some new folks who need you or you got some new folks that don't need you as much as the other new folks. So you got you got you got all this diversity in there in terms of who needs you and how they need you. So there's got to be equity in terms of your instructional leadership, equity in terms of your structural coaching. So going back to what I was saying to you before about training the instructional coach who may be in the same bargaining unit. 
you got to train that person. Because that person may treat that whole staff the same. And that's not necessary. Why, why, why does the, 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 the district teacher of the year have to have as many visits as the teacher that was in college last year? You, you can't treat them the same. You're going to lose that teacher of the year. Right? So, so you have to be able to gauge who needs what in terms of coaching. Right? So, so with that said, I'm not mad at you if you pop in that classroom sometime. Here's where I get mad. When all you doing is popping in classrooms. And then somewhere talking about, I got in 10 classrooms today. I'm doing my thing, Kefele. I got in 10 classrooms. But I'm going to ask you the question. And what conversations did you before you went into those classrooms? There are teachers in that building that need that, that pre-observation conference. Because there's, there, 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 there's, there's strategy with how you go into a classroom. I'm hearing noises outside. I'm making sure it's kosher. See, there's there's strategy. Y'all, y'all stand. Hold up a second. I just need to make sure that what I'm hearing outside is cool. Just stay there a second. It's cool. I got an uncle that talks real loud. It's him outside <laughs> talking to my wife. All right. So we good. So I'm saying this. To go in a classroom, you don't have time. Hear me, especially the assistant principals on the call. Hear me, especially the new principals on the call and anyone else this applies to. You don't have time to be in a classroom looking at everything the eyes can see. I mean, you could see it, but you can't give it all your energy. You can't give it all your attention. Your attention, your, your the, 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 the core of your attention has got to be on those areas that you and that teacher discussed in that pre-observation conference. That's where you got, that, that's where you got to devote your attention. You, you, you don't have time to be all doing, doing all this all day. This, that, this, that, this, that. No, you don't, have, you don't have that kind of time. Your time has got to be devoted to that which you discussed because that's the area that the two of you said, this is where I need to grow as teacher. Mutually, the two of you agreed, this is where I need to grow. Here's my weakness. Here's my deficiency. Here's where I want to grow. So now that's what you're going to look at. So you in there taking notes, you typing whatever it is that you do. I'm a handwriter myself. And you in there taking notes on that. So I don't want to be distracted by that when I'm trying to watch that. I don't want to be distracted by that again when I'm trying to watch that. I'm, I'm trying to watch that which we discuss. And then so as I'm watching that in all the particulars, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm being very specific in what I'm what, what I'm watching. So that now when we have that, that post-conference, that post-observation conference, which is going to be very soon, now we can focus in. Because see, if I wait days to have that meeting, that teacher's not going to remember all that. It's too much. So I got to have that immediately so that we can have that conversation about that which we discussed and then talk about what the follow-up's going to look like. But, but see... If you hoard all the information, keep it to yourself and don't share it, then what's the what's the point? You may as well not go. Right. So that pre observation conference, that observation and then that post observation, that that follow up feedback, they matter. y'all. You can't just go in there. And, and, and I want I want I want to give you this uh, uh, to think about as well. You go into a classroom. You, and, oh, by the way. You schedule when you're gonna go in there, because this ain't this ain't no gotcha. See, you could pop in there later once you feel that teacher is progressing and growing has reached a certain point. Then you can start popping in there. But right now, your focus is 
I'm going, your focus is grow ya, not gotcha. Want you to hear that again? Your focus is grow ya, meaning grow you, not got you. So I'm not trying to pop in unexpectedly. This is the formative stage, like a formative assessment. This is the formative stage. I'm trying to grow you. So we're going to have the discussion on X, Y, and Z. And then I'm going to, so, so teacher, I will be in at the top of third period tomorrow morning. I will be there at the top of third period. Ain't nothing going to prevent that. Nothing. The only thing that could prevent that is an emergency. If it's a call from my superintendent, y'all hear me. And everybody, I know that this is not for everybody, but I'm going to put it out there. If it's a call from my superintendent, doc, I promised the teacher I was going to be in her room right now. Can you let me go in her room and we can resume this as, as soon as I leave the room? Because of the culture between myself and superintendent, that is not going to be a problem at all. Because I've devised a culture between he and I that he understands why, why, why that's a priority. So, because again, I'm trying to grow you. I ain't doing no gotcha, right? So now I'm going in there at that time because imagine I don't show up. Hear me, somebody. Imagine I don't show up at the top of third period. Guess who has anxiety now while they're teaching? Guess who? <laughs> yeah, the teacher. Like, man, where is he? I'm getting ready to do that which we discuss and he ain't here to see it. Guess who loses? Not just the teacher, the children too, because they're being taught by a teacher with anxiety. A teacher with anxiety, right? So, so I'm saying here, you got tell tell hey, 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 Mike Dixon, tell tell me what you mean by that. I'm trying to because you distracted me with that. Tell me what that tell me what that means when you say the old North versus the new North. My thoughts. Tell me that. So, so I'm saying, I'm saying here. No, if you told the teacher the top of third period, the top of second period, whatever period, or elementary, I'll be there at 10 o'clock sharp, or the teacher starts a lesson at a particular, particular time, can't speak, been talking for two hours, right? <laughs> Nonstop, like no breaks, right? Then you got to be there. You got to be there, right? So because I don't want the teacher anxious, and then the teacher did everything that you said, that you discussed, and now, and now, at some point in the period, they transition to independent study, right? Well, in all the instructional part, you miss, right? So now the teacher can't benefit from that pre-observation conference, and you don't have the time in your schedule to meet the teacher again for the same reason. Right. So I'm saying to you, like like Tashar just said, Dr. Smith King, keep your word. That's instructional leadership too. keep your word. Be there. That's important, y'all. Right. But 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 at some point, and this is where I was going with this. At some point, you, you know, like 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 we let our children, our biological children, at some point we let them fly. I remember when. It was difficult for me to have my kids out past 11, right? I, I had to grow into that. That was tough. You know, I live in a city. I'm in Jersey City, man. Kids coming in, you know, like but like back in the day, they coming in at 8 o'clock. I'm comfortable. Now they're getting older. When they were getting older, all right, Dad, uh, I'll be back. At, I'll be home around midnight, whatever. Like, yo, I'm, I'm a nervous wreck. But at some point, you got to let them go, man. You got to let them go. So with that teacher... Yeah, right now, you know, I'm not going to use these, 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 these little metaphors with this stuff because it don't come out right. I'm, I'm going to be literal. It's it's right now, I'm I'm, I, I, I'm I'm doing it this way. But at some point, I'm going to let you fly a little bit, right? I'm going I'm I'm to let you fly a little bit. I'm not going to have the meeting and say, I'll be there at three. You know, let me be there at whatever time. Now, I, I'm going to pop in. I want to see how you're doing with that particular skill. But while I'm in there, I may see, I, I may discern 
a deficiency in another aspect. Ah, I make a note of that. So when, now we have a follow-up. Now I can delve into that other thing I saw. See, this thing is methodical, y'all. It's methodical because the intent is to grow you. But when I say grow you, not, not necessarily me growing you, but us growing you together as opposed to got you. See, got you don't grow nobody. That's just catching people all day. I ain't trying to catch people all day. I'm trying to grow people all day. That's a different mindset. That's a different mentality, right? So matter of fact, Mike, if you're still there, just hit me on the inbox. I'm just curious as to what that meant, right? And I'll check it later because it's probably too much to put on this thread, right? So, um, but anyway, y'all. So that's the pre-observation, the observation, the post observation. We got a lot of new folks on the thread always, you know, because because the, the, the core audience is the aspiring administrator, the assistant principal who's and particularly the assistant principal who strives to become a principal and then the new principal. Right. New pri new principals are getting these jobs and they thought that this wasn't relevant anymore. I said, oh, no, we relevant. So that's my core. But then I know we got seasoned folks that watch. I know that. I also know we got superintendents to tune in because they tell me. I know we got assistant superintendents who tune in because they tell me, right? So I know that we've got diversity in terms of who's on here, but I'm never going to deviate from my core audience who or core family who would be the new folks, the new principal, the APs, even veteran APs, and then the aspiring folks, right? So that's important. So so before, before we close it up, appreciate y'all for staying on here for two hours. Those of you who have been on since since 11, since 1055, those of you that popped on, appreciate you being here. And then we're going to do, because because this this 6 through 10 that I got here, man, this stuff is important, man. I wish I I, I want to do it, but I, I don't want to keep you all all day. But listen, but I'm, I'm going to schedule it for, um, I, I got the, um, the, 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 the instructional coaching guru is going to join me October 21. That's Nicole Turner. I'll have one of her books with me. She's got several books. And I'll be in Montego Bay, Jamaica, but that's my birthday week vacation. That don't stop nothing. I'm still going to be here, right? I'll be, but I'll be in that room. And you know, they charge me some money, but that's all right. That's all right. We good. We good. Um, and then, and then, and then December 2nd will be part two of this. That's how we do that. So look here, y'all, before you leave, let me just let you know what's happening next week and give you my rundown. Oh yeah. By the way, I know what we do when we got guests. But I'm, I went solo today. If 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 today's session was beneficial, because this out this is my evaluation. If today's session was beneficial, if it added value, if it resonated, give me an evaluation, y'all. Give me give me some emojis, right? If if I don't see any emojis, that means I suck today, right? <laughs> <laughs> give me some emojis man i won't be I, I won't be so arrogant to take my baseball bat and say i hit it out the park but but i will say yeah give me them emojis and, and let me know how i did today going solo i haven't been solo in a long time i was actually nervous this morning when i got up this morning i was fired up about it but i was like man i ain't done this in so long i'm i ain't, I ain't got my groove man I, you know because before remember i used to do it every saturday but for for 52 consecutive weeks, I went solo when we first started this. So I ain't know. I see all them emojis. Oh, man, power to the people. I appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. Laquan Stewart, I see you on there, man. That's going to be one of my guests. We're going to have a dynamite conversation. He's coming up in December, I think. But, um, yeah, thank you, y'all. I see it. I see it. I see it all. Oh, keep it coming. Keep it coming. That, that you know, that informs me. Don't do it just to stroke my ego, man. Do it because you feel that the session was beneficial. I appreciate y'all immensely, immensely. I let Mello, John, Mello Johnson says she loves the solo. My wife always says to me, you know you got to give them solo, man. You know the people want to hear you too by yourself now. You, and my mother says that all the time, man. My mother be like, when, when you going to go solo? You know that people want to hear you solo. So, I mean, I'm, I'm solo today, y'all. You know, uh, so, so here we are. So here we go. But I love my guests, man. I really do, man. Elmani last week. Hey, 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 Elmani, if you're still there, man, my, my, um, the principal yesterday, uh, my man, Warley Williams, um, down in up in um, New Bedford, <laughs> Massachusetts, man, he told me you were on fire, man. He said it while we were eating lunch yesterday. He said, man, the brother you had last week, <laughs> he was on fire, right? He was on fire. He said he was he was he was he was giving us real talk, he said. So, yeah, yeah, man. Elmani, if you're still there, man, that's uh, just a compliment to you. 
from uh, Principal Warley Williams. Hey, y'all, next week I got the founder, co-founder of Black Educators Rock coming on with me. That's uh, Dr. Melissa Chester, the one and only. Dr. Melissa Chester, week 178, is going to be my guest. She got a lot of stuff to talk about, man. I'm, I'm excited about her coming on here, the co-founder of Black Educators Rock. You bet, Y'all better tell somebody because a lot of y'all are members of Black Educators Rock, whether it be the Facebook page or members of the organization. So y'all tell somebody she going to be in the building, Dr. Melissa Chester. Um, make sure that you watch us on Facebook Live, the Fantastic Four, every Saturday. That's Josh. That's uh, Sean Hurt on Saturdays at 10 o'clock followed by Create and Educate with Dr. Sheikha Houston and Dr. Tammy Teller at 10.30. Me at, 11, at 10.55. Unlock the Middle, Sunday night, 7 o'clock, Facebook Live. Uh, Doc, um, Principal Josh Tovar and Principal Dean Packard. And then the Village Leadership Group with Dr. Roz Gaskins and Coach Williams. Make sure that you visit principalcafele.com for all my resources. Make sure you get the new book, Principal Identity, Protecting Your Leadership Mindset, Fervor, and Authenticity. You can go to... Um, uh, go to uh, Amazon and pick up a copy. Matter of fact, get this while you're at it. The Assistant Principal 50. Get this while you're at it. The Principal 50, right? Get this while you're at it. Is my school a better school because I lead it? So they're all there. And then I skip one, the Aspiring Principal 50. So get them all. These are all my leadership books. I've written um, I've written five. I've, I've written five leadership books that are published, but I, writ I wrote a sixth book the assistant principal impact, but I haven't given it to the publisher yet. It's sitting on a computer waiting for when I feel is the appropriate time to get it moving. So you can go to Amazon and get all that. And it's there for you. Um, make sure that you subscribe to the AP and new principles Academy YouTube channel. Even if you don't rely on the YouTube side, you on the Facebook side, still give me that subscribe, man. Give me them likes too, man. They matter. You can hit that like button right now on any platform you're on. They, they manipulate the algorithms, apparently. So give me them likes, too, man. They, I, I appreciate it, too. But particularly on the uh, YouTube side, give me them likes, man. Like, 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 man. That's that. I, I need that for the you for the for the uh, for the algorithms. And and Ed, you buzz, Ja, I appreciate you, man. I'm trying, man. Pray for me. I'm trying. Oh, you see, Jamaica loves. Yeah, yeah, man. That's why I'm in Jamaica every birthday, man. My birthday is celebrated in Jamaica, right? Um, that's in October. Like and follow the virtual AP leadership. No, that's wrong. Like and follow the AP and New Principles Academy Facebook page. That's where part two comes. You know, I write the commentary, man. So I'll have me a written commentary tomorrow morning. It'll be up by 10 o'clock. So make sure you like and follow that page. The, the AP and New Leaders, New Principles Academy is not just Saturday. It's Saturday and Sunday. Saturday broadcast, Sunday in writing, right? So make sure you, you, um, uh, Go on and give me a like and a follow there. And then finally, your diet. Make sure you're eating right. Your exercise and COVID. Make sure you're taking care of it. My birthday is October 22nd, y'all. Eva Thomas asked when's my birthday. October 22nd, I will be 63. Man, I'm getting up there. Yours is the 15th. I think about you. Yeah, I'm. I'm um, I'll be 63, man. I don't know where that time went. I feel like I was just 40, right? But here I am. I'll be 63 October 22nd. So hey, y'all. I'm done. Appreciate you being here. Uh, I'll see you next Saturday at 1055 with Dr. Melissa Chester. Other than that, have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Now cock your fist back all the way back and count the three. One, two, three. Here we go. Bam. My son even got one in. <laughs> I see y'all next Saturday, man. Have a great week, man. And just make sure you 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 on top of that instructional leadership because it matters. All right.